What is going on? What is going on? What is going on, party people? I uh, hope everybody had a great weekend. We starting off this week again. I'm uh, I'm switching it up a little bit. I usually have coaches and scouts, and you know we have you know people that are not as young as my current guest. All right, and. What I wanted to do, because I, I just I listen to you guys talk and I, you know, I hear the different things that is, you know, always being said. And I always want to, you know, basically provide some some great content, some some great knowledge, some great value to you guys, like always, right? So what I did was I reached out to to my boy, I'm, this guy right, this kid right here, this this dude, this man, child of over here. I've I've known him his whole life. Um Quick story, you know, quick story how his dad was my first ever roommate in professional ball. All right. We his dad and I go back 20 plus years. And I remember when this young stud was born, was the last is actually the last year me and his dad played together years ago. But we remain friends all these years later. And this guy here. Went on to now standing 6'3", 6'4", 215, running 6'6", six, 6'5", six, 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 with a hose, you know, stud, big dude. And it's just crazy to see this, you know, from him, him being a little runt to where he's at right now, big statue, big left-handed stroke, starting outfielder for the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. I, the other day, I met, I chopped it up. I was saying rambling wreck. I was going through all of my. I was just saying. <laughs> anyway, uh, I have my boy over here, Baron Radcliffe, who is the starting short, uh, starting outfielder for the Georgia Tech baseball team. And I figured, I said, listen, we talking about college all the time. And I was like, man, it'd be great if I could just bring my boy on here, and just kind of explain, and you know, just give a uh, almost like a day in the life of a college baseball player, especially for you know your parents out here that have. Um, you know, aspiring college athletes that, you know, on, on in, in the rear view coming up through the system. So anyway, without further ado, I want to uh, introduce Baron Radcliffe to the audience. Baron, if you can, just give a little background, you know, where you're from, where, you know, kind of your journey to where you got to right now in uh, playing uh, outfield for the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Mm -hmm. Um, my name is Baron Radcliffe. Um, I'm from Norcross, Georgia, about 20 minutes north of Atlanta. Um, I'm a sophomore, and um, yeah, no, I, I mean, I was big football player, big football and baseball player. High school, came to Norcross actually for to you know better my chances of going to college for football, and then you know it. I had a really really good summer um, going into my senior year, and that put me on the map in front of a lot of pro scouts and everything so it got to the point where I was like you know what? I want to chase this baseball thing I want to get drafted so I played my last senior season of football and then I let it go and then um that's when baseball you know took over and that was my sole focus and um I had a pretty pretty good season my senior year um it didn't go as good as I wanted it to or probably should have but I still was offered in the fourth round of the draft after my senior year um, for 600000 and I felt as if, you know, I could go to college, get bigger, stronger, faster, get three years or four, whatever, out of, of my education out of the way, and then come out and make what I think can be more, way more than what I was offered out of high school. So, yeah. That's right. You, that's right. You guys heard it right. <laughs> he was offered in the fourth round 600000 and he he turned it down uh, to – you know, further, you know, like you said, go to college and get bigger, stronger and faster. I know a lot of people don't understand, you know, how, but for his talent level and, you know, I was, I was, you know, talking to his dad during that time and even came to see him uh, during the senior year and he was slated to go talent wise. He is slated. He was definitely higher, you know, round uh, higher. He should have been drafted higher than the fourth round, but Everything happens for a reason, and he chose to go to Georgia Tech where he is. And, and the good thing about this, you know, unless you just go and you're hurt or you just do something crazy, 
nine times out of 10, you're going to get drafted higher than, because a lot of people do. I've, I've known personally guys that got drafted in the first round to turn down seven figures to go to college, okay? And it worked out for them, all right? So I know before judgment is made or anything like that, the, the jury, he will handle his business and you will see in the next, and that's why I'm bringing him on. So he did get drafted way late as almost a courtesy as a 40th rounder or whatever, but yeah, I remember when his dad texted me and let me know that, hey, they Padres had just, you know, shot him an offer in the fourth round and they said peace to it. But, you know, bottom line is in a year and a half from now, that's why I, I, I just want him to come, come on now. So it's kind of like, hey, watch out for this kid because you're going to hear about him in the next, you know, year and a half. OK, Her, you know, definitely going to do his thing this year in the spring season. But then he's going to come back and uh, for a junior year and tear the world up. And you're going to see him pick very, very high in the draft. All right. Already, you know, out of high school in the fourth round, you know, that's, you know, that, that's big. But anyway, I want to say what's up to Damon. What's up, Bubba? What's up, Luther? What's up, Jesse? What's up, Pudgy? What's up, Pierre? What's up, Jerry? What's up, Kurt? What's up? Well, your dad. All right. So <laughs> anyway, yeah, he all, he all watching, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, what's up, Brian? All right. So we are, uh, I want, Parents, okay, we, we, we're going to explain, you know, we're going to, I got it, my set of questions, you know the routine, and, uh, okay, it ain't, it's, it's your mom. So anyway, the, uh, oh, <laughs> anyway, um, parents, so ask questions um, to, uh, you know, my guy here at the end, you know how this goes, you know how the routine goes. So anyway, let's start off with, I have my own set of questions, all right, so parents, um, I know you chose Georgia Tech. So what other schools did you have on your radar? What were you looking at? Because I know you were a stud football player and you had offers to play football too. I personally didn't want you to not sign. I wanted you to sign a football scholarship. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. you, 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 you said you was done with it. But name some of the schools that was after you. For football or baseball? We'll go both. Let's go both. Oh, man. Football, I had Louisville, NC State, Florida State, Michigan, uh, Southern Cal, Vanderbilt, um, Ohio State came late in the process. Um, and other the, the crazy thing is a lot of these schools came out after I had already decided, hey, I'm done with football. But because they knew I didn't want to play anymore, they wanted to try to give me this big old, like, let my coach know, like, hey, we want him. And it was just one of them things where it's like, ah, right, y'all, it's too late because I did – everything to have your offer beforehand. So why wait until after I had already said I'm done to try to come throw me an offer? And then other schools like um, UNC was showing love. Auburn was showing love. Like I, I Michigan State was showing love. Like I had big time offers. And when I tell these people, like, they're always like, hey, man, what, what are you doing? Why are you not playing football? It's just one of those things where it was like, I, I know that baseball is where my heart is. So, you know, that's what I want to do. And with that being said, I had um, Clemson interest. I had some Vanderbilt interest. Uh, UCF was actually my first offer. Um, Georgia, and then, then came Georgia Tech. And it was crazy because me playing football, a lot of my baseball offers came late because before they had that rule where you can't offer so early. I mean, a lot of these schools are offering kids in freshman year high school, sophomore year high school. So they're filling up classes. So, you know, they had to um, do a couple of things just to get me enough money to be able to, you know, have a decent, a nice scholarship. And I didn't want to take any money um, that wasn't. And for the people that don't know out there that baseball doesn't do 100 percent scholarships, like it's really rare to get a 100 percent scholarship, how football and all the other sports do. So. I wanted to be able to get as, enough money to where I didn't have to have my parents pay anything because I know if I was playing football, they wouldn't be paying anything anyway. Um, so I was able to get, I think, a 73% scholarship. And then there's a thing in Georgia called the Hope Scholarship. And it's basically, you, gotta, you have to have a 3.0, maintain a 3.0. So that covered my the other 27% of my 73%. So I'm basically on a full. Um, so yeah, I mean, in, in Georgia Tech, when I took my unofficial visit, I ended up committing. I took one visit, ended up committing because the assistant coach who was there at the time, um, a guy named Brian Prince, he was, I mean, me and him hit it off like that. It was an amazing connection. Um, he showed me and my dad, I mean, being in, you can't beat being in downtown Atlanta, first of all. Um, 
I just, I mean, there's no other college experience or there's not many other college experiences like that where you're downtown Atlanta in the city. Um, it's, it's crazy. So there's that aspect. There's amazing coaching staff, you know, uh, amazing resources as far as, I mean, it's education second to none. Um, and, you know, I mean, there's just so many things that went into it that was like, man, yeah, that's the school for me. It's close to home. I live only 20 minutes away from school. So if I ever need anything, my parents are phone call away. And, um, yeah, it, I mean, it's the perfect situation for me to end up here. So <laughs> nice, man. So let's let's dig a little deeper because, you know, I, I you know, I didn't know how the whole scholarship thing. I, I figured you out of you know, somewhat of a full ride because I always hear all the time, like there's no full rides in baseball. There's no full rides mm -hmm. in baseball. And, yep. you know, and you actually, you know, for a big time program like Georgia Tech, um, you actually signed pretty late. I mean, I mean, you know, committed yep. and signed pretty late your senior year because yep. most of these guys are committing at freshmen and sophomores, you know what I'm saying? And yep. so, I mean, I, you know, two things I see with that is, you know, I want you to explain how the whole, you know, how your whole full ride get put together. But then also the fact that you were just that talented that you were like, they were like, hey, listen, you know, we, we'll find a way to get you in here. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. um, so if you could like explain, you know, your full ride, you know, that whole, how, you know, how you get a full ride, because that's that was news to me. I'm learning this, too. Um, Man, it, it's crazy that. I was blessed enough to be able to get a full ride because, you know, I asked a lot of my other teammates who are really, really talented. I don't even think it really has anything to do with the talent level. I think it, well, it does, but not as much as someone may think. Like I can do, I mean, I got 73%. Joey Bart, who was second overall pick from my school last year was only on like 50. So coming out of, coming out of high school, I mean, you know, you were, the coaches will give you an offer. And if I don't know many people that, you know, they turn down the coach's first offer and try to get more, you know, it's kind of almost whatever that coach says, hey, I know we can give you this. And with me, the situation was he knew the coach at the time knew that I was a football player and I could just as easily go get a full scholarship from somewhere. So he wanted to do everything he can with the money that they had left to be able to get me as close to 100 as possible. Um, so I think, you know, like I said, there's a lot of talented people that are still only on 30%, 40%, because you got to think about it. It's There's 11 point, you, baseball gets 11.7 scholarships to share between 35, sometimes 40 people. So you got to figure out, you know, it's, it's I don't, I don't want to go as far as to say it's what the coaches think you're worth, because that would be crazy. But at the same time, you know, they got guys already. You, got, you, you It's just based off what they've already given guys in the past. So if you've got, you know, seniors with 70 percent, 60 percent, that means you got to give a, a incoming freshman 30, 40, stuff like that. So. No, I, I, that's good info, man. So the you chose your detective like, you know, you would be, you would be a perfect person to. You know, I've been harping, I've been actually bashing big time schools like yours, you, you know, behind the scenes. You don't know that, but um, I've been, you know, and, and I, I don't do it out of, you know, malicious, you know, I ain't trying to be like mean spirited, but mm -hmm. I just think it's, and you, you would have, you would be the perfect person. You got drafted, you know, you got drafted in the 40th round, but you know, you, dra you, you turned down 600,000 in the fourth round. So you would be the perfect person to think about going to the junior, you know, junior college route, just mm -hmm. putting up a year or so. And then bouncing right, you know what I'm saying, getting, you mm -hmm. know, entering the draft again a year later and try to increase that, you know what I'm saying, you know, that the offer that you got. But what, mm -hmm. you know, did you ever even consider junior college route? And was that even in your I never I never once considered junior college. Um, my parents are both huge education people. My dad has a master's in education. My mom also has her master's. She was a guidance counselor at my high school. Mm -hmm. Um, so my whole life, my parents have been harping on me and my sister you know education education first and so I, it never even crossed my mind to go do juco because they figured you know if you go to college you might as well go to like the like not juco like go get your experience go have fun and then georgia tech being an engineering school being such a um you know amazing school as far as like i said education second to none 
it, it really didn't make any sense for me to ever consider JUCO just because, you know, when I when I turned down that 600,000, it's like, all right, we're going to school and we're going to go get some of this education out the way and, you know, get, you know, develop, um, polish up and then come back out. And then, you know, whenever I go back and finish school, I'll get that degree. Um, but, you know, just I never no, I never thought about JUCO just because I was stuck on, you know, go get the education out the way as much as I can um, from a really good school. You can't pass down that degree from Georgia Tech. So, yeah. No, nah, no doubt about that, man. So, you know, so now you're in your season and you're playing, you're entering, you're not, you know, you're in the middle of your second uh, full year as a college student. And I know last year probably had to be, a, you know, a tough transition for you, but you know, for the parents on there who, who, you know, have kids and inspire to play at a big time program like yours, um, what, what's a day in the life, you know what I'm saying, for Baron Rackliff? Like, what's a day in the life in a year, you know, this past year? Like, what, what was your schedule like, you know? Man, it, it was a big change because, I mean, starting fall ball, you got, well, after, so we would do, I have, if you get an 8 a.m. class, like I had 15 hours of credit, I had 15 credit hours of classes every semester since I've been here. So that's been three classes on Monday, three classes on Tuesday, and or sorry, two classes on Tuesday. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, three, and then Tuesday, Thursday, two classes. Um, practice normally starts either, I think it was on Mondays, it was three o'clock or 3.30 and Tuesday, Thursdays, it was uh, 2.30. And we got early work. So you show up an hour before if you can, if you have class, just, you know, hurry up to the field, get your early work in, hacks in the cage, stuff like that. And then once you finish fall ball, it's, you know, you got, oh, I can't forget to mention that there's mandatory tutoring for these classes. So a normal day, like my freshman year was um, 8 a.m. Like a typical Monday was an 8 a.m. class, 10 o'clock class, a 12 o'clock class. And then I show up to the field right after my 12 o'clock class um, at 1.30, get my hacks in the cage, and we're practicing 2.30 to about 5.36, go get dinner from 6 to – seven or six to six fifty and then have tutoring from seven to eight. Um so I wasn't getting back to my room. I leave at eight a.m. or seven thirty in the morning and don't get back to my room till about eight thirty at night. And then when you get back, you know, you gotta study or you know, because it's not to it's specific tutoring classes. So you might have math tutoring Monday. You might have, you know, history tutoring Tuesday. Um, so you if you still got to get studying out the way you can't use that tutoring hour because you have to do whatever you have to do in that class and then Tuesdays we had mandatory study hall no it was Sundays we had mandatory study hall from 12 to 1 or 12 to 2 12 to 2 so you know they they give us the resources to do well in school because I mean it's a hard school you know um, we don't have as much time as normal students to just study all day because we got practice three hour four hour long practices stuff like that and a typical day for me this semester was I had 15 hours again. So three classes Monday, Wednesday, Friday, two classes Tuesday, Thursday. And then we would have those three hour practices, um, stuff like that. And then I didn't have any tutoring this year, um, but we did still have hours that you have to log in in this place called the Tech Center and the Athletes Association. And you got to get those like coach see if you win or not stuff like that so you still have the time to get those assignments out of the way so long story short and then you get in the conditioning time so you got lifting at 7 30 in the morning or seven o'clock sometimes monday wednesday friday and conditioning at 6 30 in the morning tuesday thursday so it's crazy because a lot of times people wake up you have an 8 a.m you're waking up at 5 45 running from 6 30 to 7 30 go quick shower, uh, shower at the field, and you got 8 a.m., then you got a 10 a.m., then you got a 12, then you got, you know, it's just crazy stuff. So being at a big school, you don't even have to be at a big school, but more big schools do it than not. Is It's really long days. So you that those hours, probably 8 to 11 at night, depending on what time you go to bed, you got to really know how to time manage because if you don't, you know, you, you'll fall behind in school, You'll be tired because when you get home from a long day like that, you want to go to sleep, but you got to have enough. Um, you, you just got to know that, hey, I got to do this 
or, you know, I'm not going to be prepared for this quiz the next day. I'm not going to be prepared for this test the next day. So you just got to really know how to time manage because the days get long and exhausting, but you got to know that, you know, what your priorities are first. You can't go sit up in the room and play Fortnite all night when you know you got work to do. So, yeah. How, how long did it take you to get, you know, to adjust? Um, it took me... I can't even say it really took me long. Um, my freshman year, I knew what I wanted to do. I knew I had to um, really put, I just wanted to be that freshman. You know, I come in, because I heard being at Georgia Tech, so, such a hard school, I heard like, hey, you might lose your hope scholarship, which is keep above 3.0. A lot of people do it after that first semester. So I was like, nah, I'm not losing my scholarship. So I busted it and I finished with a 3.0. Nice. that semester but that was because I, I never allowed myself to have to take a month to adjust or because I didn't I couldn't my parents would call me hey you do your homework yet this and that and the third so it was one of those things where I didn't I mean I would say that first maybe a week two because my friends would be like hey let's play video games let's do this do that and then I would be like man I gotta I gotta keep these grades man I gotta do this I gotta study gotta go to tutoring so it didn't really take me that long and I was able to keep my coach scholarship. So nah. so now now you transition to the season and what what is what does the season look like now, time wise? Um we are on Christmas break right now. Well, I'm talking about as far as like last year in the spring oh, season. Oh, last year. Yeah, last what, year. like the scheduling and how'd you handle your mm-hmm. books and everything? Like oh, what's the man. typical schedule during the season? You know what I'm saying? It's man, it is hectic that spring during the season is hectic like for example we had who do we play i forget who we play we had a wednesday game we left or tuesday game left thursday morning to go to virginia played them friday yeah played them on friday and then saturday skip sunday for i still don't know what reason because a normal weekend series is friday saturday sunday Mm -hmm. but we skipped sunday Played Monday. The game got delayed because of rain, and we didn't start till about 10.30 or 10 o'clock. So we didn't get done till about 1, 1.30. Had to catch a private jet back to Atlanta at, I think we took off about 2.30, 3, and then got back home at 4.30 Monday morning. And then I had an 8 a.m. class that mm. morning. So I got about – Two and a half, three hours of sleep. Wow. Um, and then we played a game that night, that Tuesday night. <laughs> and that's just to give you a like the most hectic, you know, schedule I had the whole time. Because I mean, you playing, it was just crazy. You know, you gotta sometimes you gotta get up. And you only get two and a half hours of sleep because they class check, so you don't have a choice but to go to class. And, you know, it, it was rare. That only happened one time where we showed up where it was that late. But that's the most crazy schedule because I think you said you have parents on here and they need to know for their kids. Like, there might be a situation where you only get two hours of sleep, two and a half hours of sleep, and then you play a game later that day. So that was the most crazy schedule. But normally you play a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, Mondays were our day off. The, throughout the whole season so we didn't do anything baseball related on Mondays except for that one Virginia game and then um, you either play on a, it depends on the week you either play on a Tuesday or a Wednesday if you play on Tuesday you practice Wednesday Thursday and then leave or play Friday and those are for home games and if you play on a Wednesday or you play away for a series this weekend you'll play on Tuesday at home or away whatever and then come back have Thursday Wednesday, Thursday to have a light practice. And but and then again to go back, if you play a way series, we leave on Thursdays. Right. I'm about to so, say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we would leave on a Thursday, um, early, probably around 10 or 11. So and that was just because we would get there early. Like if we were gonna go to Duke or NC State, anywhere in that Raleigh area, that's about six hours for us on a bus. So we would leave, and then when we show up, we'd go to the hotel, drop our stuff off, and then go to their field, and they would let us have, like, a small practice. We'd do a little practice beforehand, team meeting, and then wake up the next day, and we would play at 7 or something like that. But, you know, just a lot of, you know, six-hour bus ride here, six-hour bus ride there, 
uh, you know, getting a flight, you know, like this year we're going to Miami. So that's a, we get to fly that it's, I think it's a past six and a half hours. You got to fly. Like it's a mandatory thing. You have to fly. Um, so it's just crazy. Cause that six, those six hour bus rides are, man. <laughs> and we did it three times last year. We did it for NC state, North Carolina and then the uh, ACC tournament. So the was, bus rides are crazy. It was preparing you for for <laughs> for the next level, yeah. man. Six yeah. hours is actually a short bus ride when you actually that. Oh man! <laughs> oh man! <laughs> I know it. I know yeah, it. Just get just get ready. Crazy. Trust me. Trust me. Get ready. <laughs> anyway, the uh, so how is the school work wise? And parents, I yeah, I see a few questions coming in. If you got any questions for Byron, please uh, type them up, and I'm gonna ask them. But as far as school work wise on the weekends on the road, is there any like mandatory, you know, study halls or is it just, you know, play and then get back and do mm -hmm. your thing? How does that work? When you're uh, it depends on the school. I know some of my boys that are at school is that they would have a mandatory, like if they play at a se at seven o'clock, they wouldn't get on the bus till three. So maybe 12 to one is a meet in the lobby or meet in this conference room that they got set up and do school work. We didn't have that because um, we did it during the week. So for some some schools, like it, it really depends on the school. But, you know, as far as doing work on the road, like if you got an assignment due on Saturday at 11 p.m., you best try to knock it out before you even travel. Because I got caught up. I think we, we were in Pittsburgh. I sat in the hotel lobby in Pittsburgh and wrote a five page paper. I had to wake up about eight. I woke up at nine and we had from we didn't have to be on the bus till three. So I woke up at probably nine. And I busted that thing out. It took me the whole, what is that, six hours? I, I finished around two. Um, but that was just me procrastinating. So, you know, I, I mean, I can't speak for everyone, but like I'm saying, it would be best if you finish those assignments before you even travel. So then you ain't got to worry about it because you don't know if the, the hotel you stay at is going to have good Wi-Fi for you to connect and do your assignment. Just things to worry about if you knock it out before you even travel. So that's right. what I, that would be my advice. So on this, uh, do you ever like those tough days, right? You, you're getting up at whatever in the morning and you, you traveling and you know, no sleep and the schoolwork and all of that. Do you ever, do you ever second guess your decision not going pro and, and taking it? <laughs> Sometimes it's like, man, like, yeah, I guess I do because you know, it's like, man, I could be playing baseball every day instead of, Waking up, sitting through classes and doing all these practices and study hall and tutoring and just all this stuff. You know, like, I don't know many kids my age that, yeah, I love school. So it's kind of one of those things where it's like, yeah, like sometimes I'll be like, what would, it, what would I have been doing if I would have just took the draft? But I know everything is worth it because, like I said, that when you get that degree, working towards that degree, I mean, there's nothing that you can um, – but you can't get any better than that as far as, you know, um, just going along with the education aspect of it is, you know, that if you're working hard, in my life at least, it's been where when I've been working hard in the classroom, I've been performing well on the field because when you work hard on every aspect of life, it, everything kind of comes together. That's how I look at it. And so, yeah, I feel like when I bust it in the, in the classroom, I've been able to bust it on the field because I feel good about everything. I'm not stressing out thinking about like, you know, right. Being in right field, you got a lot of time to think about stuff. <laughs> so you can be out there and be like, man, I, I wish I didn't feel that test earlier today. <laughs> stuff like that. So if you, if, I mean, it just eliminates all the factors because you can really, if you make an A's in these classes, you feeling good, you, you, you know, solely baseball. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I mean, I don't I don't mind school I don't it's not my favorite but I don't mind it and I know that at the end of the day going to school was just one of those sacrifices that I had to make to better myself so when I come out in the draft I can get way more money and go higher than I did at high school right man. So. Well, well I know uh I know you're making some new fans on here right now there's no doubt about it man. <laughs> so, anyway, anyway, let's let's uh let's go back all right a couple years now because you know I, I don't want to harp on it out. I, I, I don't want to make you, you know, but around this time, two years ago, it was pretty hectic. I want, I want you to, oh, yeah. you know, for the people who are going through, going through it or about to go through it, what was like a, 
you know, give me like a two month time frame of how hectic it got leading up until your high school season and during the high school mm-hmm. season, as far as like phone calls and meetings and yeah. everything like that. Um, I was new to the game, you know, I was, I showed up late on pro radars. So I was new to, I didn't know what to expect. So once it was, you know, home visit Monday through Friday, it was crazy. Like me and my parents were just sitting there like, man, this is nuts because I had such a good summer where, you know, I was projected to go up there second round, late first round, stuff like that. So the more highly rated you are, the more people want to meet you. They want to, you know, they want to have that meeting set up so they can figure out what type of person you are other than just baseball players. So I would have Monday, they have a Royal scout come in for two hours, you know, sit in the living room for two hours, me ask all these questions. I have a twin, you know, just every team Monday through Friday, you know, guys are different. So they can get all their questions out in an hour. And then you got guys that like, I think, who was it? I think it was either the Cubs or the White Sox. He was in my house for probably three and a half hours, four hours. <laughs> so, you know, just having conversation and digging into my brain, picking my brain. How do I think about certain stuff? And then you got all the questionnaires that get sent. Teams would like you to fill out questionnaires. And sometimes these are 100 questions based off of, you know, um, would you rat or are you a party person? Are you a stay in person? Just questions like that. So it got very crazy because it was like questionnaire, do this questionnaire, meet here, um, go let these people see you hit. So there'll be times I go to ninth inning with my pops and it'll be eight, nine scouts come in, want to watch me hit, have me do different things, see all this stuff. So really it's like, you're not a lab rat, but you might as well be because it's like they want to pick your brain. They want to see what type of person you are, what how you feel about the game, if you love it, if you actually love it, um, all these different things because they're not going to put millions of dollars into someone that, you know, is questionable. So it really depends on what type of rated player you are because the higher you are, the more scouts. Like I had all 30 teams in my house. Um between that my senior year span and you know if you're you know lower on the radar you might have two or three so it's less so really the more rated you are the more stress it is just as far as I got to meet here I got to do this questionnaire I got to go hit for them it's you know it's crazy and then going into the season there would be people that wanted to come see us enter squad and practice and watch me take at bats and that's not even that's like before the season started where it's inner squad and then they want to come see a bats. They want to come see how you play in the field. And then I would have like game days. We hit on the field before the game, there'd be 10, 12 scouts come watch me just take BP on the field. So me being new to the process. And I think the biggest advice I can give to anybody going through that process in high school is do not let the moment be too big. Because like I said, I was new to it and I struggled the first half of my season because I wasn't used to 25 I'm a lefty so they're down the right field line you see 25 cameras recording you hits I'm like man I gotta hit a home run here I gotta do this (laughs) and I think I started off I just give the facts I was like one for 27 with 12 K's my first 27 at bat nice and then so it was terrible it was I mean it was just nuts. I just let the pressure get to me. And then I got to the point where I was like, man, I can't do this no more. I just got to have fun playing the game. And then I went, I hit 667. We started a region play. I was up until region play. We got to region play. I hit 667 with seven home runs mm. um, for the rest of the season. So I was able to finish with a good batting average, but it was just one of those things where everything happens for a reason. Um, you know, this, I was I went from um, – first, second round to, all right, we'll drop down because he kind of shows signs of iffy. When you come out of high school, they want to know that you are the guy. You like They want you to hit 700, hit all the home runs, play good, show emotion, all that. And so when I was struggling, it was, all right, like scouts started dwindling, dwindling. It went from 25 to 28 scouts a game to 10, 12. But then when I got to region play, I mean, all of them, not all of them, but 
like I said, the, like besides like the six, five or six that were still there, they got to see me go crazy in region because, you know, they stayed, they knew they saw something in me. They didn't flee when everything was going bad. And so I was able to come out of that slump that I was in and go crazy. Um, but like I said, everything happens for a reason. So I dropped down and then lost the money, lost the value. And then that's why I'm at school now. But like I said, my biggest advice is to don't fold when you see all the pro scouts, like they're there for you, show them, you know, have fun, still do what you want to do, but don't let the moment be too big. Cause that came around to end up biting me. Well, you say yes, you said no. Like you said, everything happens for a reason. And it's, it's a different, it's no different from you playing in front of, you know, 10,000, you know, Virginia and, you know, things you're going, everybody has experience. You know, that was the first time you playing in front of that atmosphere. I mean, it's easy to say now, oh, I didn't come, whatever. But, you know, just to be in that position, one, is huge. The fact that you have 25 scouts at every game, you know, yeah. looking at you. I'm, I'm, you know, and I, I just want to kind of give a, a parents that's listening in to an understanding of, you know, where the the season part is kind of like it's almost dwindling down. But from from what would you say, Baron? Maybe October, November of your senior year on. I mean, as far as meetings and phone calls and got to be at this cage at this particular time. This guy wants to come back and see you again. He's bringing somebody else, and he wants yep. you know the hectic schedule of you know the draft process. It gets it's it's is exhausting. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it, it oh, it's crazy. Exhausting, right? Even even and that all, everything I said was you know leading up to the season and during the season and after the season, I probably went to five pre-draft workouts teams want to see you again after the season they want to see you take live bp against pitchers that they brought in they want to see you be they want to see you hit bp they want to see you field throw run 60s all this stuff after they've probably already seen you do that probably two or three times in the last year so i did all those and then it got to the point where we flew out the the <laughs> i went to a padres workout i think the draft was on june 12th my senior year which was 2017, and I flew out. To, I think there was a workout maybe June 1st uh, for the Padres. Went there, did really good, and then they told my – who. I mean, you can have an agent in high school. So I, they told my agent, hey, what are the chances he can fly out to San Diego? So me and my dad, we were able to get a plane. We, had to, we got on a plane to San Diego on probably – June 5th, June 6th, man. Like they had just seen me, but they asked me to come out to San Diego and we did this big old workout in their stadium, you know, five, six days before the draft. So when that when I'm telling you that they want to they want to see you as many times as they can, so they know they're investing money into something that's gonna be real. Um, it's real because I mean they saw me probably you know tell how many times the Padres saw me. I hit for them in the cage. Um, they came to the games like brought brought cross checkers like it was crazy. They saw me a lot, and then it was still leading up to the draft. It got to hey, can he come out to San Diego and hit for us on our field? And when I got to San Diego, I mean every staff member you could think of, all the way high from GM all the way down to area scout from Atlanta, was there. Um, and it was probably me and like, I think there was two UCLA kids and then a lot of Juco kids out there, but I mean, it's crazy. I mean, teams want to see you as many times as they can. So, and you're not going to turn it down. You know, you want to get drafted. So you're going to put yourself in front of them as many times as you can, no matter what. So, I mean, it's, it's hectic. It's crazy. Uh, I just, I just, again, I, People don't really understand how that goes and how, how heck, they, you know, they look at it, oh, he got drafted, but they don't know the behind the scenes. They hear scouts, they hear questionnaires. I know for a fact there's a couple people listening or definitely will listen to the replay who are going going to go through this. And, you know, it's just good information. I mean, they're, you know, I, I just, it, it's, it's, I know, I know, the, I know how this thing goes, but I ain't have as hectic as you flying out all that, you know, that wasn't happening because, you know. Yeah. The, uh, I'm gonna start asking these questions from these from the parents that are listening in, in and uh, and let me see. We gonna go from oof, got a bunch of comments. Let me see. We got uh, 
Jesse asks, first and foremost, congratulations in picking the greatest sport ever. <laughs> he says, <laughs> second, do players have some kind of influence over other players in high school or JUCO to check out college programs? Um, yeah, I think so. If I'm answering this question correct, I think that like one of my homeboys, one of my best friends, actually my best friend, Ivan Johnson, just left UGA this past year and went to Chipola down in Florida. Um, really big name Juco, win the championship all the time. Um, and I think, you know, it it's crazy how many times he's asked me, hey, bro, just come come play Juco, bro. You, we can get drafted, do this. Uh, he's asked me probably 20 times, like, hey, leave leave school, bro. Come do this Juco. Let's let's get this money. So it's it's funny that he says that because, yes, there is an influence because if you have friends at Juco, you know, they want you to come do that route and get drafted or somebody like me and be like, hey, why don't you come to Tech with me? Like high school kids, like it's a big influence factor because – as much as the coaches recruit, they want their players to recruit as well. So, you know, the more people that I reach out to like, and get cool with, they, the more they might want to come. So, like, you know, hey, you know, everybody's cool here. You know, come here, play with us. We don't get, you know, we're going to be good. So, yeah, there's definitely an influence because even in high school, there will be some of my friends that are going to UGA, going to Florida State, going to, you know, CU, be like, but my friend, being that it's my friend, I can have conversations with them. Be like, hey, why don't you come sign a tech with me? Why don't you, you know? So, yeah, there's definitely influences. You know, if you have friends that are, you know, you want them to come with you and things like that. So, yeah, definitely. Yep. Yeah. The uh, Christopher Gunter Memphis asks, what was the what was the part of your personal game that needed the most work? And how did you overcome and address this part of your skill set? Um, even coming to school in my first year, I didn't do nowhere near as good as I thought I should, but my biggest, you know, weakness in the game was hitting for average. I hit the ball a mile, I can run, I play defense, I can throw, but it was a matter of constant contact and not trying to hit the ball, not swing so hard where my contact is way lower than it should be and striking out more than I should. So what I wanted to do was, you know, figure out as many ways as I can, you know, calm that swing down. I'm swinging 90%, percent, sorry, swing at 60. Because when I'll be in the cage, swing at 60, it's just money. Um, so the more, and like I said before, me playing football, I would miss all types of summer tournaments and this and that for seven on seven over the summer. So I wasn't having all that bats and, you know, at bat after at bat after at bat that other kids were helping themselves develop so really my first year of college was, and even when I was playing summer ball, I didn't see 93, 94, 92 a lot. It was rare. So really when I got to school, I struggled because early I hadn't seen 93, 92. I was playing football. I didn't get those at bats and those big name tournaments where our guys are all throwing hard. So when it got to guys throwing 94, I was like, yo, like this, you know, I gotta, I gotta get used to that. So once I started getting used to that, I think the best thing that helped me was I went up to um, my summer team this summer, um, Kalamazoo Growlers up in the Northwoods League. And we had one day off in June and one day off in July. And I got about 160 at bats throughout that whole summer. So that helped me the best because I really got to figure out, I didn't have to worry about things at school where, you know, he might play, I might play today, he might play the next day. Like I was playing every single day. So I got, all those at bats and I was able to figure out, you know, what type of hitter I really am and figure things out because I was playing every day, getting four or five at bats a day. So that helped me really increase my, you know, between having my dad on the line all the time, having good uh, hitting coaches on my summer team, I was able to fix that, you know, hit, swing and miss flaw as much as I could. So I'm, in, I'm excited to see how I'll be this season because I've already been through a season. I know what to expect. Had a really good summer, and now I'm going into this. I had a really good fall for school as well. Um, so I'm excited to see, you know, because I've fixed some things. i fixed some mechanical issues that I had that, you know, all play a role in how I'm swinging, what I'm doing, doing here, doing that. So now that all this is fixed, I think that, uh, you know, I'll be able to put up way better numbers than I did my yeah, freshman year. No, 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 no. It's just basically just gaining experience and 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 getting your age. Mm -hmm. 
Bottom yep. line, nothing like getting yep. those ABs piled up. So exactly. Um, so Damon uh, D. Brooks from Alabama asks, did you ever consider playing both sports? Yeah, I did. Um, pretty much the ACC schools like NC State, Florida State, they were going to allow me to play both. But, you know, like I said before, um, I didn't – just a few things that I went through with the football recruiting process, like it's really political. Like if you don't – you're not that – like I went to the Elite 11 camp here in Atlanta, got invited to it, and – you know, they took um, – if you watch football, you should know these names, like Justin Fields, Jake Fromm. Um, what's the dude from Clemson? Um, Clemson's the, the freshman quarterback. Yeah. They took those kids – and oh, Trevor Lawrence. They took those dudes and put them in a group, and it was like, all right, well, have fun, guys. We're watching this group. So just going through that process, it was like, man, like, why am I even here if I'm balling out? But because I'm only a three-star, four-star, I don't get the same attention that these five-star get. So it's like, why am I even doing this? And then I threw for 2,500 yards with 25 touchdowns my senior year. And, yeah, yeah, I play quarterback, by the way. And um, it was one of those things where I had already decided, like, after that – like, I went through all that political stuff. It was like, ah, I don't, I'm not trying to do this. And – that's when all the big offers came because it was like, oh, now they want to hop on the wagon. It was like, oh, I'm too late. It's too late for that. Now I'm trying to play. I'm trying to focus on baseball. So, yeah, of course, I, I mean, it's crazy because our football coach at Georgia Tech just left and the guy that came in right off it and they don't have any spread quarterback. Really? So I was talking to our parents like, ooh, I might go out <laughs> play football again. But then it's like, nah, I ain't doing that. That's, yeah. that's in the past, you know, I'm going to keep doing this baseball thing and Everything will work itself out. I don't have to keep trying to figure out ways I can go back to play football. Yeah, I miss it, but uh, it's not big enough of a deal. Where I need to go suit my cleats back up. So, all right. So, Mark over in Missouri asks, uh, was there any prep work in working with the crazy schedule in high school, or did you just land with both feet running in college and go with it? If you had, if you had known how crazy of a schedule, would you have, would you? Let me see. If you would have known how crazy of a schedule would you have to follow, would you have pe prepped for it better in high school? Basically, he's saying, like, you know, if you knew how hectic your schedule was, would yeah. you, you know, would you basically prep for it more? Would you practice yeah. it or, you know, um, be ready for it? Yeah, I knew based off of the school that I was going to that, excuse me, it was really, you know, that things were rigorous. I knew that it was going to be hectic when I got there. Um, now I slept on it as far as how hectic it was at times, but I think I would say I landed with my feet, you know, I landed running, I landed with both feet, took off running because my parents kind of prepped me for being able to handle certain things that I had to deal with as far as waking up, doing this, doing that, and being at Norcross in high school, I had to, I mean, every day for football in the summer, we wake up at I think workout started at six every single day during the summer, except for the week of um, July 4th. So I prepped for that, that as far as, you know, making me a morning person, not struggling and getting out the bed, being able to function that helped as far as the workouts and the conditioning goes. Um, as far as the schoolwork goes, I didn't really have to prep as much because of the mandatory tutoring and the study hall. So I was able to, balance those and kind of and have help to where it didn't hit me like a train at one time like it was like all right people were like look you have to do this but we're going to set aside a time of the day to help you do this so it wasn't like I had to figure out anything on my own so all right your uh one of your dad's ex-teammates asked uh okay more asked to what degree would teachers work with you as far as tests assignments and etc um, they, the athletic association prints off papers for the whole team and you got to take it, get a signature from your teacher and then you leave it. No, you don't get a signature. You leave it with the teacher, but it gives your whole schedule. And it's a message from the athletic director basically saying like, Hey, please excuse so-and-so on any date that y'all have any type of quiz or assignment or test that he can't be here. Please allow them to make it up when you get, when they get back. So, for instance, like if I had a lab on a Friday, um, they would allow me to make those things up 
Monday or whenever I can. And within the next week, they would give me that next week to do it. So they're pretty lenient as far as, I mean, they don't really have a choice because our athletic director, you know, gives out a message and they understand knowing the kind of schedules that we have that you have to be able to show the athletes leniency because it's not like we're just sitting on campus doing nothing and just skipping their stuff. Like we might be eight hours away playing a game. So they have to allow us to do these things when we get back, especially that there's a message with our whole schedule showing, you know, what days we can be here and what days we can't. All right. We, uh, how big, uh, Bubba from Alabama asks, how big was, uh, let me see, let me get it right. Uh, how much was the travel ball a part of your high school experience? <laughs> um, I played as much as I could, if as long as it didn't interfere with football. So if I had a seven on seven tournament, I would have to go to that because I was a starting quarterback, couldn't miss that. Um, so I would go to that. And then I only had like two or three of those a summer. So every other time, you know, I would go play travel ball as long as there was no football interfering with it but it was crazy for me because I had football workouts every morning so I'll wake up at six work out or wake up at five sorry work out from six to eight yeah we had lifting from six to seven and the conditioning seven to eight and then we would go out go home go back to sleep and then be at a ballpark playing a baseball game at three o'clock so um, I would play baseball every week as long as it didn't interfere with my um, football schedule. Okay. He also asked, did you did you seek an agent or did the agent find you in high school? Um, we the, he fought, he found me. Um, I find that a lot of times players don't really seek agents. They'll recruit you type. Um, and this guy I did, and this guy was helping me you know, get my name out there and get my name out there to schools and pro scouts before I even said, hey, look, like sign the contract. Like, you are my agent. Um, so and I'm still well, we had to let him go, so to say, because we can't have an agent in high, or college, excuse me. And so but I mean, we, still, you know, we'll talk here and there, um, but he can't work or do anything for me while I'm in college. But he was work, like I said, he found me. It was working for me before I even, you know, announced that, hey, you're my, like, we sat down, had a meeting, like, all right, you're my agent, we want to go with you. Um, so, yeah, he found, he he sought me out and then helped me. And then it was to the point where it was like, man, this dude been helping me before I even needed, like, said, help me. So, we went with him and, you know, he's been good to us. So. All right. Manuel from Texas asks, what kind of programs were you involved in during middle and high school? Perfect game, baseball factory, et cetera which would you recommend? Um, I would recommend uh, Perfect Game. Um, I did the baseball factory stuff. I got invited to the baseball factory stuff um, as far as the what are they, like team one showcases. And then I got invited out to preseason all America out in Arizona. Um, but Perfect Game, you can't go wrong with Perfect Game. That Lake Point complex and is, which is about 45 minutes away from where I live now. Um, when you go out there, especially being when you're about to go to college or specifically from 15 to 18, when you're playing out there, even 14, if you're like crazy talented, but they can't offer you anymore. Um, but there's, you know, there's teams from every state, you know, everybody's out there trying to figure out who they can offer. So I, you can't go wrong with perfect game just for the sheer fact that they got that one complex where you see every team walking around like they wear their pole, they wear their um, college shirts with their team on it or a hat. And you'll see every team from D1 down to D3, NAIA, JUCO, like that's by far the best platform you can do just for the simple fact of everybody knows what perfect game is. And perfect game is where all the college scouts go or recruiters go. And I think that's definitely the easiest way yourself or your son, if this is a, a, a dad, um, out and uh, exposed. So, all right. Jesse asked from Vegas. Asked Launch Angle ever talked about in hitting lessons with you guys over there? Um, yeah, they are big. We don't, you know, a lot of teams. Growing up, you hear a lot of different things. Um, but 
I think the main one that you'll hear is oh, hard ground ball, hard ground ball. But for us, mainly it's we want good flight. We don't want any lifting. We don't want balls beat into the ground, but balls like head high to, you know, doubles in the gap. That's what we are. That's what's preached in our hit lessons, you know, that we want good flight, backspin, backspin, backspin. That's the main, that's the main thing they preach is backspin. So, you know, don't, they don't want you to hook any balls, like don't flare any balls, drive it, get the head out and get good backspin. Yeah. That's the main thing they preach. Okay. Condi asks, which is your favorite sport, baseball or football? Baseball, for sure. But the thing is about baseball, it gives different aspects. I love both of the games, but baseball more because I'm more passionate about baseball. However, football is one of them games where, you know, I can be mad and be like, all right, I'm about to go knock his helmet off mm -hmm. and then go do it. It's a, it's a contact sport, so if you want to take some energy out, you know, you can go tackle somebody, go run somebody over. Baseball is, you know, you can't you can't be all hyped up, hot-headed. you got to be relaxed and cool just because it's, it's not a game where you can go act on emotions. Like, you have to take advantage of the opportunity that you do have and compete, but you can't just go – you know, knock somebody out like you can in football. So there's times where, you know, you get mad and angry because everyone knows baseball is a difficult game. And I balanced it in high school because, you know, I could be mad at baseball and then go out to football and then have my anger out. But baseball, you got to really know how to control this because if you lose that, it's a hard game and it's, it's a very humbling game. So if you lose your mind, you know, you go downhill quick. Okay. <laughs> We got uh, Mr. Portraits out here in New York asks, do you think having an agent in high school is important? Oh, for sure. Because the agent at the end of the day is who gets you out there, is who pretty much sells you as far as like, you know, this, my guy is better than someone else, so-and-so because, and it gives his list of reasons. He sees them, you're, you're with him all the time. It's his job to sell you to age or uh scouts and even recruiters as well and so i think the mainly an agent is important because when it comes down to draft time that guy is who can negotiate a dollar amount negotiate where you go in the draft so if i didn't have an agent like my dad didn't have an agent when he went out and i'm sure he feels low balled because when you know when you're dealing with a team and obviously it gets to the point now where it's almost like, you know, if you don't have an agent or somebody working for you, this team, they know they can persuade you with specific things or specific things because agents know how much you're worth. Agents know what the, um, what's the slot value for the certain spot. Whereas a mother might not, or a father might not know exactly, especially if they don't have anyone that's ever been drafted in their family, they might not know how it works. So if your so-called so agent is your mom or your dad, then it's one of those things where they might not know how the process works, where an agent is someone whose specific job is to know things like that. So for me, you know, my agent was able to negotiate a number, um, sell me as far as, you know, this guy is the guy and do all these things for you. And then, yeah, for the sheer factor of they know, their one sole job is to help you get out there, help you understand the process and things like that. Okay. All right. Well, listen, um, we're right at an hour right now. I want to, I want you guys that's listening in right now. I think, well, Baron, I want you to say, I think you made a lot of new fans today. Okay. Yeah. Well, overall, <laughs> just, I mean, you, you, as you can tell, as you can see, you know, my boy and his wife, Nikki, they, they have done a great job with this young man right here. He speaks well. You guys, are, you, 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 he's sitting down, so you don't really get to see how big and strong <laughs> this dude really is. So when you talk about total package, smarts, obviously you hear him talking. This is what you call a total package. It's somebody that you know will succeed in anything he chooses. He just so happened to be great at academics and, and sports and, and with the uh, sport, uh, game of baseball. Um, I think to I think a lot of information has been shared about the draft process. 
Um, definitely the scheduling when it comes to college um, and just the workload that it a student athlete has to go through. And it, and it started well, trust me, I've, it's, it started way back in sophomores and junior high school for this kid, you know what I'm saying, with the, the schedule, the hectic, the traveling, and you parents are going through it. But he was one of those – he is one of those guys that, as a senior, was you can project it, whatever. So the schedule with the agents calling, the the, the questionnaires being filled, the, the, the scheduling, and now with the college thing, in the next year and a half, I guarantee you, I mean, who doesn't think this kid is not going to go high? I already got my boy D. Brooks definitely – it's like, yo, let me get an autograph now before the order before the, before the value goes up. It's, 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 that's my whole point, you know what I'm saying? And I and and that was one of the reasons why, you know, of course, be, besides information, but you know, this guy here is one you want to root for. And I got a couple other guys that's coming down the line, but uh, he's a year and a half away. I got a couple guys that may be a little bit closer, but I want you guys to all follow, you know what I'm saying, Baron Ratcliffe. Baron, do you have any your Twitter or your or your Instagram or anything like that that, you know, for the parents or the or even the parents' kids, they may want to follow, you know, you. Yeah, um, my Facebook is just Baron Radcliffe. Um my Instagram is R A D number two X. Um let me man, I don't even know. I just made a new Twitter. So yeah, I gotta get my Twitter, work, my Twitter work, handle, man. Yeah. But yeah, no, I just made a new Twitter. And that's the other thing. And I guess I'll just give my piece on this too. But Please colleges go. and scouts and pros or Please college go. recruiters and pro scouts will Preach always look at your social media. They'll Say always it again, Please. Media. I just talked about this the other day. Preach on this, please. <laughs> They'll always look at your social media, man. So do you not have any parents and you know other kids around my age watching this, bro? Like, don't have any anything that could be looked down upon on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, anything, because it's, it's, it's frowned upon, obviously, for obvious reasons. So, you know, just make sure that Twitter's clean. And I've had my Twitter since I was probably 14. So I didn't want anybody to look back and see something stupid that I retweeted or liked or anything like that. So I just recently made a um, new Twitter page and you can follow that. It's uh, Radcliffe the number two and the X as well. So yeah, there's that. Radcliffe, the number two, X? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll write it down. Let's put it on here. So everybody can see. You said you were preaching about the social media stuff. Yeah, we had, yeah, we had a scout Saturday, and he he talked about how he took kid. They took the Oakland A's took kids off the draft board because of their social media tweets oh, or, yeah. or statements and stuff. And how he said people have lost, even guys that were drafted supposed to be high round picks, end up getting drafted lower because of some of this stupid stuff that they wrote, you know, on the yeah. on the Twitter handle or, or the Instagram and stuff. Yeah, organizations have people that are paid to stalk your social media. So there is nothing that they won't pull up because they literally, their job is to sit there and make sure your whole feed is clean. So yeah, I don't know if y'all can see that, but okay. I got that. Yeah. I have to flip that. Yeah, I got those. Um, Rad two time and Baron Radcliffe and then Twitter is uh, Radcliffe two times. I don't know if it's backwards. But Keep it up for another, hold on one second, hold on. Okay. I'm going to text it in while I'm here, too. Okay. I had the uh, Twitter. But, yeah, I, yeah, he he went on a hardcore about that, man. So, um, you know, I definitely think that, uh, yeah. All right, cool. And the uh, – so, again, follow this young man through his journey. We're going to have him on again. Trust me, man. And uh, yeah. and shameless plug again. I keep telling you guys, on Wednesday, I'm, 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 I'm slated to launch – my program and it's with this guy here. Okay. So, you know, I'm, I'm slated to launch this on when I promise you it didn't work out that it just timing of it just worked out that way. I promise you didn't, I didn't do this purposely, yeah. but, but anyway, I got this guy on my hidden videos. We go through a bunch of hidden drills and everything. He's a small portion part of my program. So, um, yeah, anyway, the that's coming on Wednesday with this launch tomorrow. I'll be here by myself on Wednesday. I have, uh, slated, um, Dave Clark, who is the third base coach for the Do Detroit Tigers, coming on on Wednesday. Um, Thursday, got Dow Roberts, who's he was a dad who's going through 
He's he, he's his kid is going through right what we talked about with the, the type of scheduling and stuff. Baron had as a senior year. His kid is going through it. Throwing ninety four out of the Vegas area, signed the Cal Berkeley already. His the dad is going to come on and kind of explain the situation that Baron just kind of you know kind of gave a little layup and pray you know a free prelude to what free, whatever that word is is coming on, <laughs> uh, on Thursday yeah. and then Friday I got ex major league Milton Bradley coming on on Friday to kind of talk about the major league side and. With Milton been through it and all of that. So anyway, we're just gonna keep this ball and this knowledge rolling, man. So um again, Baron, man, appreciate it, man. Just impressive young man. Follow this man, root for him. I know you made some new fans today. I uh, appreciate you coming on. Keep rocking and rolling. You know, year and a half of the way. Go, go have go have a great year, man. And I'll be in contact yeah. with you, man. And uh I, I appreciate you coming on, man. I appreciate you having me. All right. Hey, All right. Hey, my boy Daryl, I'm going to go I'm gonna finish like that. I told Daryl, I said he throw 94. He, he texted back 96. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Oh, man. Hey. <laughs> Excuse me. All right, man. But anyway, i see you guys, man. i see you guys tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Much love, man. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. All right, man.